Hey everybody, welcome to Church Online. My name is Braden, and it's awesome to have you with us. I love that you could be tuning in from anywhere around the world and today you're tuning to join us here at Life for Church Online. Well, we've got an amazing speaker today. We've got Pastor Alex Seeley. Now she's the lead pastor of The Belonging Co in Nashville, Tennessee, all the way from the United States of America. I know you're gonna be blessed by the message she brings today, so let's get into it right now. We had such a good time at Sisters. I loved every second of it and uh, just the best. So thank you uh, for just making it a beautiful time. I love that I have my husband with me. I never get to travel with him. And so it's been a real joy to have him with me. Um, You know, actually, when I was dating my husband or before I started to date my husband, I had really loved him for many years, and he just took a while to catch up to loving me. Um, (laughs) I kind of knew in my heart that he was the one for me, but I had to wait for him to pursue me. And um, when he finally did, and he pursued me, I was so elated. We were actually at a pastor's retreat, and uh, we confessed our love to one another, and I was so excited to go home and tell my mum, And um, what you have to know about Pastor Henry that, you know, now I look at him and I think, look at that refined man of God that I'm married to. But when we were dating, he had kind of long scruffy hair. He would sometimes not wear shoes to church. He would eat Hungry Jacks and um, come to church late every single week because he thought church started at 7.30, but it actually started at seven. And so (laughs) he was always a little bit late. So he was always this crazy kind of musician guy. And um, when I told my mum that I was in love with this boy, and I think this was going to be my husband, she literally looked me deadpan in the face and said, over my dead body, will you marry that boy? (laughs) True story. And I was devastated because I was the type of girl that asked God for five confirmations before we even dated. And I had got four confirmations. But the fifth one was that my mum and dad would give blessing to me. Because I didn't want to do again what I'd done in the past where I dated boys behind my mum's back because she never liked anybody. <laughs> so I kind of just was secret about everything. And, but I knew that when I'd come to Jesus at 21, I really made that line in the sand moment that I would do everything to honour my mother and my father. And, uh, and that meant that I needed their blessing in order to move forward. And she literally said to me, you will not date that boy. He is not right for you. And I forbid it. Well, my heart was devastated and I went into prayer. And I remember talking to Henry and saying, I can't actually date you until my mum gets the blessing. And I love that he was such a man of God that said, all right, well, let's continue to pray. I believe that your mum will have a change of heart. If this is God, God will change her heart. And so we committed to pray. I ended up getting very sick that next couple of days. I had the flu very badly. My mum was so angry with me that she didn't talk to me for two weeks. Now, you've got to understand, my mum is an Italian mama who dotes and feeds you at every waking moment, especially when you're sick. I was so sick that she was pretended like I didn't exist in the house. So I ended up moving in with my sister for two weeks because I was like, I don't even, I'm not even getting a glass of water from this woman. She's so mad at me. And so I go to my sisters and I begin to pray. I'm in my sick bed and I begin to pray and she will not speak to me. She is completely silent. And I'm like, God, what is going on? But I just knew in my heart, if you've taken me this further, God, her silence doesn't mean a denial. You are going to have to change her heart. And as I began to pray and Henry began to pray, we actually didn't see each other over that two weeks because I was so sick. It was two weeks to the day, Saturday, two weeks later, but I ended up moving back home. I was fine now. And I was on my way to work because we had a young adults ministry on a Saturday night and I was on my way to church and she stops me and she said, Alex, before you go, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's speaking to me. <laughs> and she goes, before you go, I just need you to know that yesterday I was with my prayer partner, Lucy. God bless her soul. She's with Jesus now. She was my mum's prayer partner for about 20 years. And she said, I was with Lucy yesterday and Lucy rebuked me. 
And Lucy said that I have to lay down my agenda and allow God to do what he is supposed to do. And the boy that this has, God's brought to you is God's choice, not mine. I give you my blessing. It's official. And I literally just was like really calm, but then I'm like... (laughs) on the inside. (laughs) I ran in the car, I call Henry, and we made it official that day, and we were married within 14 months. And the rest is history. It's 26 years this year that we've been married, and I think God made the greatest choice for my life. But what happens when someone goes silent like God? When it feels like God has gone silent And he, you think, where are you in this? And I don't know what you're doing in the midst of my praying for something and believing. I believe, God, that you said something. But what happens when God is silent and you think he's not working? You see, the whole time that my mum was silent, the whole time that I was praying to the Lord and I really didn't get a word from the Lord in that two weeks, I had to trust that the word that he had given me for those four other confirmations, I had to sit and I had to wait for him to actually do the outworking of the promise. I had to believe that God is a God of his word and I must wait and pray it with anticipation and faith until he speaks again. You see, before Jesus came to the earth, there'd been a period of over 400 years of God being silent. Could you imagine God being silent where He did not speak? 430 years where He did not speak and yet you actually see that False prophets and other people kind of filled in the blanks for God. They wanted to add because how many know that when we feel like God's not speaking, we just feel like we've got to add whatever we think He's saying. But sometimes He's silent. He's silent for a reason. And here He was before Jesus graced the earth. There was a silence in heaven for over 430 years. I think about the fact that when someone goes silent, What do you need to do? I believe you've got to go back to the last thing that he said. And here, if we look at the last thing that God said, it's actually in Malachi chapter four, five to six. This is the last thing that God says before he goes silent. He says, see, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Right now, God's had a little bit of enough of the the children of Israel. He's a little bit ticked, if you like, because he's watched them break covenant through bringing blemished sacrifices through seeing divorce, through seeing injustice, to seeing the withholding of ties, to hearing them speak arrogantly against God. They'd forgotten who their God was and here they are actually living so apart from God's ways that God has had enough. It has been season after season after season of God pursuing His people, God giving them His instruction, God saying, if you do it this way, you will be blessed. But if you do it this way, you will be cursed. I still am baffled at the fact that the children of Israel would constantly err to the side of going after their idols, after man-made things that they thought had more power than the God that created the heavens and the earth. And yet God is here saying, I'm about to go silent, but this is the last thing I'm going to say. God's people were not faithful to the covenant even though God has to deal with them and they just don't get it. How many times have we been given something from God and it's almost like we just shove it in the corner and think somehow our ways are going to be better. We get lazy in our faith. We get familiar in our faith and we disobey God and then there's just absolute destruction that wreaks havoc in our lives. They broke covenant with God again. And he goes silent. 
I think about this scripture all the time in 2 Peter 3, 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So I think about this and I think, well, if a thousand days to God is like a day, because he's transcendent of time. He doesn't work in the calendar of 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's transcendent of time. So if a thousand years is like a day and a day is like a thousand years, then 430 years to him is basically half a day. So for him, it's a pause. For him, it's just, I'm taking a moment. I just need to settle and let them see what they're made of. He said all that he needed to say. He laid out what was going to happen. But words were no longer helpful. Have you ever done that with your kids where you have been talking and instructing and repeating and giving that over and over and they're just like deaf and they're just like, I'm not listening to you, mum. I'm just doing whatever. And then words just don't seem to help anymore and now consequences just have to come in. And I feel like God was just like, you know what, kids, I have been talking to you. I have been instructing you. I have been giving you every prophet, every word. I've given you the law of God and you keep ignoring it. So now I'm just gonna keep silent and I wanna see what you are going to do in the silence. I wanna see what you remember. I wanna see if you'll go back to seeking me and finding me. I want you to go back to the last thing that I have to say. But in those years, they were a blind and deafened nation. That they were so far gone that God, who was silent, needed to bring Jesus 430 years later. What do you do when you feel like God's not speaking? What do you feel like when the heavens feel like brass? What does it feel like when you think, God, where are you? I believe that we have to go back to the last thing he said. I think we have to go back to the last thing he said because sometimes we wanna go ahead of God and he says, I just need you to do what I asked you to do way back here. Maybe there is a frustration in you. Maybe there is an agitation in you. Maybe there is something inside of you that you feel like you can't get to the next level and God's saying, I actually just need you to do what I asked you to do in the beginning. I need you to obey me. I need you to trust me. I need you to read back over those prophetic words over your life. I need you to pick up the word that actually explains who I am and who you are in the midst of it all. What are you doing when it feels like the heavens are like brass? It feels like God is not speaking. What do you do? We need to be patient. We need to be still and surrender to His timing. But they just kind of added to God's law. They began to speak for God and add unnecessary elements rather than go back and obey what had already been said. It's kind of incredible because if you look through that season of 430 years, you realise that the prophetic words from the book of Daniel were being fulfilled during his silence. God is amazing that when He speaks, everything goes according to His plan, regardless of whether you're on board or not. He is sovereign and His will shall be established. He will use us, but you know what? If we don't obey, He's just gonna go to somebody else. I think we, un- don't, we, we underestimate the power that God's will will be established. We saw the Persian period from 450 to 330 BC. We saw the Hellenistic period from 330 to 166 BC. We saw the Hasmonean period, 166 to 63 BC. All of this was prophesied. And then there became the Roman period from 63 BC until Christ was born. All prophesied, all declared. And now we have Herod, who is the ruler of Palestine at the time of Christ's birth. Talk about a complex leader. He was Arabian by race, Jewish by religion, culturally Greek and politically Roman, and he was known as King of Judah. 
That's a pretty messed up time to be alive. We think we've gone through crazy. This is nothing new under the sun. Jesus literally walked the earth when the craziest of leaders was in dictatorship, when he was in leadership and this was all prophesied. And then Jesus enters the scene. And then we see here in the book of Luke where Zechariah, a faithful priest, is doing his faithful duty. You see, in Malachi, it talked about a remnant. It talked about a remnant who would be heard by God and every word that was said would be heard by God. And we look for 430 years later, we've got Zechariah, a priest, who is faithfully attending to his duties, even though God has been silent. I wonder if there is anyone in this place today who's been faithful to God, even when you feel like the heavens are shut like brass, but you still stay faithful. You're still the remnant that says, I will not relent. I will be faithful regardless of whether I'm hearing the instruction or not. It's amazing how many people to me, I know in America, it may be different here, but everyone's seeking for a prophetic word all the time. I believe that God gives us prophetic words when we need them. I believe they're signposts and they're directional flags that if we're gonna go maybe one degree off, that God will always just bring us that recalibration. But somehow we've just, we've, we've yearned and we've become lazy that we want everybody else to hear God on our behalf. But I've got a word that looks like this, that has the prophetic declaration over my life that I can access every single morning, noon and night. Are you gonna stay faithful even when it feels like the Word looks like where you're just chewing glass when you read it and nothing feels like it's penetrating? God wants to see a generation that has a little bit of grit that stays faithful even when it doesn't feel like all the windows of heaven are open over us. And Zechariah was faithful to his priestly duties. And as he was faithful, there is a suddenly that happens. You see, this is why you should be in church on a regular basis. See, church isn't always a mountaintop. It always isn't an earth-shattering experience. I've learned this. I've been in the church now for 51 years. But it's been the consistency and the faithfulness that when I've been in the meeting or if I've been in and around, that suddenly has happened throughout my life. And Zachariah, imagine if he had just decided, well, God isn't speaking, so I'm just gonna wait till he speaks. But let's read this in Luke chapter one, verse five. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God. Observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. While God's not speaking. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by Lot. It wasn't chance, it was God. According to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. This is the first time that God is speaking since Malachi. This is the first time that we hear the word of the Lord. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. 
And he will be a joy and delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or any other fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. Now listen to this. I just shared with you the last thing that God said in Malachi. And now this is what the angel of the Lord says to Zechariah as he's been faithfully serving, even when God has not been speaking speaking, that God has been hearing his prayers and because of his blameless righteousness and blameless obeying of his commands, this is what is declared over his life. John, he will bring back many of the people to, the, to Israel, to the Lord their God. And he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts to the parents, to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Are you kidding me? God picks up right from where He left off. The last thing He says is that I will bring the one, a prophet like Elijah, who will turn the hearts of the children to the parents and the parents to the children. Oh my gosh. And now because Zechariah was faithful, because he was the remnant, because he continued to keep praying unto God, even though he didn't hear the Word of the Lord, the suddenly came and God prophesies over him that he will have a son. That will be the very answer to what has been needed. John, who would prepare the way of the Lord, Prepare the coming of Jesus. Prepare the moment for everything that has been wrong with the world since Adam and Eve sinned. Now Zechariah gets the honour and privilege of birthing the Elijah to come. Oh my goodness. And then Zechariah says, well, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Sometimes we need to be silent so we don't curse what God is busy fulfilling. See, God may be silent but he's needing you to put into practice that which he has spoken to you about. Will you be a faithful remnant that regardless of whether you're being poured into, that you know that God is who he is, that the nature of the very God that you serve that saved you, if he never did another thing for you, even if he never audibly spoke to you in your heart, he has given us a word that they did not have. Yes, they had the law of God, but we have the full canon of Scripture. We know how the story ends. We have every prophetic word written out in black, white and red, and we have an assurance that if you feel like God is not speaking, well, guess what? That doesn't happen in this side because we, He's always speaking. There's not a time where God is ever silent anymore, but oh, sometimes it feels like He's silent. But what are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna sit back and let your Word of God stay on your nightstand and just stay in your bookshelf because you don't feel like you're receiving revelation? Oh, would we be a church that continues to be faithful because maybe, just maybe, there's going to be a suddenly moment where he prophesies something so great. At the end of Malachi, God promises to send Elijah bring, to bring back the obedience and repentance. And in the New Testament, this is now being fulfilled. Even Jesus in Matthew eleven fourteen 14 says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you're willing to accept it, he is the Elijah to come. Matthew 17, 10 says, Elijah has already come. And this the disciples knew to be John the Baptist. Don't miss what you can learn in the silence. Don't miss what God is trying to do. You see, when, when you're going to school and when you're going to university, you're given assignments and you have a lecturer and you have a lot of words being thrown at you. You're learning, you're sitting under teaching, you're hearing the words. But then when it comes to the test, the teacher doesn't talk to you during the test. 
The teacher can't talk to you during the test because the teacher now needs to see what you retained, what you understood, what you have applied in your life. And sometimes God will be silent because he's saying, what have you learned with what I have spoken in the past? Have you done what I've asked you to do? Have you forgotten that I am waiting on you? We are waiting on God, but he sometimes is waiting on our faithfulness, on our our obedience, on our ability to say, God, whether I feel it or not, I will stay true to your word. We've got to look at the last thing he said and wait. But not wait idly. Wait if the band could come. Wait by reading and meditating and waiting with expectation. You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You see, unless you are reading, and I read my Bible aloud. I've been doing this ever since I can remember. I read out loud because it's a double-edged sword. Because sometimes when you read in your thoughts, you're thinking about other things. But when you read out loud, there's a focus to every single word that penetrates deep into the soul and the spirit man. And God wants you to get faith risen up. See, I think Zechariah held on to the words of the law, that he held on to the words of the prophets, that they weren't going to get lazy in their priesthood, that they were gonna stay faithful and obey God regardless of whether they understood what was happening or not. Because sometimes God says, my ways are so much greater than yours. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. How can you understand what I'm trying to do for I'm a transcendent God. I just need you to obey. We must remain faithful. We must remain diligent to continue seeking Him, to find Him. We've got to live today what He spoke to you yesterday until He speaks again. Do you know there's been times where I've just had to keep one foot in front of the other. There's been times where I feel like, God, what are you doing in my life? I actually don't know. I just, I feel, I feel insecure because I feel like I need you to guide me somewhere. I need you to tell me what the next step is. And he's always been so faithful to say, Alex, you don't need the next, next step until you need the next step. But for now, you need to just follow the step because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And you just gotta keep stepping in the right direction even when you feel like I don't, I can't hear anything. But just like GPS, where you could be on a very long highway and you don't hear anything from that GPS voice, it's because you're on the right track. But when you have to take that turn or you have to take that roundabout, trust me, right before they're gonna say, take a left turn now. And right before that left turn, they're gonna remind you to take that left turn because they're gonna make sure that you get to your destination. God will speak when He needs to speak. But our job is to remain faithful. Our job is to remain steadfast. Our job is to trust God at His Word. And I just came here today to remind some of you that you feel like the heavens are like brass. And you're wondering, where are you, God? I just don't feel like I hear you anymore. There's some keys to this. Sometimes He's saying, what haven't you done that I've asked you to do? And until you do that, I'm just gonna wait. And some of you need to repent for your disobedience. Some of you need to repent for your laziness. Some of you need to repent and go, you know what, I have taken this for granted and I've just let life go past. Don't take any day for granted because you are not promised tomorrow. And you need to understand that what God has asked you to do is because it's a specific assignment for you. Obey Him. Maybe He's saying, be still and just know that I am God. You don't need another word. You don't need another confirmation. Some of you are waiting and He's like, I don't need, see, I asked for four confirmation, five confirmations because I was young. I felt like Gideon. Can you give me another fleece? Another fleece. I think we pray about fleeces, but I don't actually think that they're good. Like we think a fleece is maybe the confirmation, but that was because Gideon was in fear. We just need to take God at His Word and stop asking for 10 confirmation. He's saying, I'm not finished yet. Don't give up. 
He's saying, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. I've not left you or forsaken you. He's saying to someone today, just let go. Let go and let God. He's saying to someone today, the battle belongs to the Lord. With every head bowed, every eye closed. I just pray right now that the Holy Spirit would move upon each of your hearts, that He quickens something inside of you, that perhaps this has been an encouragement where some of you are just like, God, I don't know what's happening and it's making me a little confused. God, I just feel like I haven't heard you clearly. I hope today this is encouraging you that He is not forgotten you, that His silence does not mean He is not working. His silence means He is working on your behalf, but He doesn't need to tell you every detail. That His silence means that He is doing what He said He would do. Just like when my mum went silent, oh, I could have felt like everything went on pause, but God was working on her heart. I didn't need to know what God was doing in her heart. I didn't know what God need to know all the details because God was working on my behalf as I continued to pray, as I continued to believe. And all through my life, I've had to just learn, I must stay consistent. And when God is such a God of His Word that He picks up right from where He leaves and He says, okay, now let's get down to business. Now it's time to act. And if you just felt like God is speaking to you today, or you just feel like, man, I need a breakthrough because I feel like the heavens are like brass for me. I feel like just a little cloudiness. I feel like there's a blanket where I just don't hear clearly, see clearly. I feel like I've hit a wall. I want you to stand to your feet. I wanna pray for you right now all over this place. Don't be shy, just be bold because this is breakthrough. Sometimes I think we think, oh, what's gonna change? But God wants us to do something in the natural so that it gets us out of our place of containment. There is a God that wants to reveal things to you, reveal mysteries, reveal secrets. Some of you have been praying for something and you feel like God is ignoring you. Your God will never ignore you. He hears every prayer. He hears every single prayer. Now, He answers it yes, no, or not yet. But sometimes we just have to believe that every prayer has been heard, just like Zachariah's prayer had been heard. And so right now, everyone that is standing in this place, God, I pray that there would be a breakthrough anointing over their mind. I pray that You would bind their mind to the mind of Christ, that You would release the fogginess, the confusion, for confusion doesn't come from you. Apathy does not come from you. I break every disappointment. I break every bit of apathy. I break laziness. I break that feeling of disappointment right now in the Name of Jesus. And I release an open heaven over you. I release the Spirit of God to reveal truth. I see you opening the Word of God and at first it doesn't feel like much, but as you stay faithful, oh, those Scriptures are gonna come alive to you. And so right now we declare by the Spirit of God, that You will hear His voice, that You will know His ways and that You will be encouraged today that He has never left you or forsaken you. In Jesus' Name we pray, Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. We pray that message today encouraged you and impacted you in your walk with Jesus. In fact, if you wanted to know more about a relationship with Jesus, we would love to connect with you. So why don't you reach out to us? You can text Jesus to 4989 or you can visit our website. And if you're around of our campuses this Sunday, we would love to meet you. Why don't you come along, connect with some great people and get a part of an amazing church community. Well, that's it from me today. I hope you had a blessed day and have a fantastic week and we'll see you soon.